Hello, I'm Walt Anderson, coordinator of football officials for the Big 12 Conference. The new rules on targeting have generated much interest and raised many questions from fans on just what the rule means and how will it be enforced. We want to take a few minutes to help our fans understand what is and is not targeting. First of all, and very important, targeting is not simply contact to the helmet. You often hear, that was helmet to helmet and should be a foul. But such general statements are often just flat out wrong because most helmet to helmet contact in football is not a foul. Football is a contact sport and very often one of intense contact. Hits to the head are going to happen and the vast majority of these are perfectly legal. What is not okay and what the new penalty enforcement is intended to help eliminate are the unnecessary hits to the head where players are intentionally targeting the head area or using the crown of the helmet to target the opponent. We all want to eliminate these unnecessary hits. Educate on the reasons why these types of hits are dangerous and need to be out of the game and work on numerous fronts to achieve these goals. Targeting is broken down into two rules, 913 and 914. The simplest way to remember these is that the first rule involves using the crown or the top of the helmet to intentionally target and initiate contact to an opponent. And it does not matter which part of the body the crown of the helmet hits. It could be the chest, the gut, the leg, or even the head. But using the crown of the helmet basically as a weapon, that is the key. The second rule involves targeting and initiating contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless player. And the rules are very specific about which players are by rule deemed defenseless. This type of targeting could be with the shoulder, with the forearm, hand, or also with the helmet. The key in this rule is the target area, being the head and neck, as opposed to the first rule, which is a method used to make illegal contact, being the crown of the helmet. That's the basic difference between the two rules. Key language in both rules are the words targeting and initiating, as the rule is intended to discourage a player who commits an act that is clearly outside the established standards of hard-nosed football techniques, because such actions create an elevated risk of injury for both players. Let's look at some plays that will illustrate illegal action that we want to eliminate from the game, and we will look at some legal hits that are common to the game and the type of hits that we want players to make. Plays in this section are all examples of targeting fouls. And for the 2013 season, we'll carry disqualification as part of the penalty. These plays include one or more elements that players have been warned increase the risk of a foul occurring and thus players have been told to avoid these types of actions to help avoid a foul. These include launching at the opponent by leaving the feet to attack by an upward and forward thrust to make contact to the head and neck area. A thrust upward and forward from a crouch position to attack with contact to the head and neck area. Striking with the helmet, forearm, fist, hand, or elbow to attack the head and neck area. And using the crown of the helmet by lowering the head before attacking the opponent. In addition to the four high-risk actions, there are also four actions that we want to highlight that create a low risk for a foul, and thus are actions that players want to try to use when making contact with an opponent. This is not to say that targeting cannot occur when other acts combine with one or more of these low-risk actions, 
But these actions will decrease the risk of targeting and will help officials recognize actions that are less likely to result in the targeting and initiating action that leads to a foul. These four low-risk guidelines are a heads-up tackle in which the crown of the helmet does not strike above the shoulders. A wrap-up tackle where the player is making a conscious effort to wrap the opponent with the arms rather than attacking him above the shoulders. The head is to the side rather than being used to initiate contact. and a position change of players due to the normal course of play that may lead to incidental helmet contact. But this incidental contact is not part of targeting. Finally, fans need to understand that because of the serious injury that illegal contact to the, he to the head can lead to, officials have been instructed by the Rules Committee which is made up of coaches to aggressively enforce this rule, knowing the possibility of an incorrect call might happen. We hope these videos have been helpful in explaining the targeting rules. The safety of our players is our highest priority, and therefore, every effort will be made to aggressively enforce this rule with that priority in mind. The importance of everyone working together to make our game as safe as possible is vital in meeting the challenges we all have in this area. And your understanding of this rule is an important part of that process. Thank you for your continued support of college football. And for all of you, good luck this season.